Now on that day, suddenly, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who does not normally come out during the daylight to visit people, he visited Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu in his home in the heat of the afternoon. The heat of the afternoon, and he was covered, and he was walking quick. He knocked on the door, it opened. Oh, it's Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Aisha radiallahu anha says, we saw him come in. And when he came in, obviously this was his wife, but they had not yet lived together. The Prophet sallallahu asked for Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, welcomed him and sat down. And the Prophet sallallahu says, whoever is in this home, tell them to leave. Because there was something important to discuss. So Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu says, there are none other than my own family, my own daughters, they are here, no one else. So then he spoke immediately, few words. He says, look, Allah has given me permission to leave. Subhanallah. So this was what they were waiting for, permission to leave. Without permission, they were not allowed to leave. Now this was in the month of Safar, towards the end of Safar. It is reported that 27th of Safar, somewhere near the end of Safar. And Allah had instructed me to leave. Most of the companions had already gone. So what I need you to do, O Abu Bakr, is the following. We will meet at this particular cave. We will meet at a specific place. And that is where the two of us will get together. Or better still, according to some narrations, I will come to you by night. And the two of us will get together and we will leave. We will go to a cave and spend some time in the cave right on the outskirts of Makkah. Because as soon as Quraysh knows that we have left, they are going to send little armies and little groups of people all around to go in various directions to look for us. If we are on the road at the time, they are going to catch us. And if we are somewhere where they cannot see, then they will not be able to catch us at all. And they won't even find out. They will give up hope. So we will wait there. And then they had a guide whom they needed because the road, it was difficult. As I told you yesterday, people needed a guide. Those who were not very used to the road would have needed a guide. So subhanallah, Abdullah ibn Uraiqit, he was a man who was a mushrik, but he was an honest, upright guide. And he was a person whom they had trusted. So they hired him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hired him and told him the following. Look, we want you to meet us at this cave in three days time. That's it. Subhanallah. So he didn't know too many details. All he knew is I will meet these people at this cave three days time. And here are the two camels. Take them with you and you bring them when you come. So he took the camels. So in the meantime, Ali radiallahu anhu was instructed by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look, tonight you will sleep in my bedding here in my home. And in the morning you will get up as usual. And I have so many... Uh, uh, items of value which belong to Quraysh that they have kept with me and everything is properly recorded. You need to take all these things and give them back to whomsoever they belong to so that nothing is left in my home that belongs to someone else. So that was one of the reasons why he, he was kept there as well. Because if Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam had gone to give back Quraysh their things, they would have blocked him. They would have known he's leaving. So the fact that he still had the items, some of Quraysh doubted, thinking that this man couldn't have gone with all our things. He is very trustworthy. See, so this was also part of the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the meantime, the daughter of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, Asma binti Abi Bakr, she had made up with her belt, two little holding, uh, meaning food holders, and she had she used to take the food to that cave. When they got to the cave, inshallah, we will still get to that. But she was the one who brought the food up and down from the cave uh, to the cave from the home. Now, that evening, the Prophet ﷺ was in his home. And as per the plan of Quraysh, these men had come and encircled the house. Ali radiallahu anhu was in with him, subhanallah. And they knew the man is inside. They were happy. So, as night fell, some of them were tired and some of them were this and that and they were not really concentrating. The Prophet ﷺ was instructed by Allah to leave the home. When he left the home, according to one of the narrations, he was reading verses of Surah Yasin, وَجَعَلْنَا مِن بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ سَدًّا وَمِن خَلْفِهِمْ سَدًّا فَأَغْشَيْنَاهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ He took a small little hand of dust and he just threw it just as into the air. And by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
every one of those young men who were waiting to snap at him happened to have some grit in their eyes from the dust he threw. Now the meaning of the verse of Surah Yasin, and we have placed a bar before them and a bar behind them, and we have covered them so that they cannot see. That's the meaning of the verse. So as he read the verse and he threw this little handful of dust, they all at one time began to rub their eyes. Now you tell me, if you were rubbing your eyes now, how would you know who else is rubbing their eyes? You wouldn't know. So all of them at the same time, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam stepped out and he was gone. Out to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu's home and the two of them left for the cave. In no time they were in that cave. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu went in first in order to look. It was at the top of Mount Thawr. Mount Thawr, I'm sure those who visited Mecca have been shown just on the outskirts of Mecca to al-Mukarramah. And when Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu went in to see that there is no snake or nothing harmful inside, thereafter Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa went in and the two of them camped there, they waited there. In the meantime, it's important to know what happened there, back at home. Ali radiallahu anhu was covered with the clothing of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when he got up and the narrations make mention of how when he stepped out, they were so excited until they found out this is Ali ibn Abi Talib. So where is the man? Oh, the man is not here. Where is he? I don't know. Perhaps he's, he's gone somewhere. But how could this be? We were watching all along and we saw him in here. Subhanallah. And where is the man? Gone. So news spread in the morning, in the morning across Quraysh that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is gone. He's gone. What did they do? They became mental. They became mad. They started preparing little groups of people, go this way, go search that way, go search this way. And they heard Abu Bakr is with him. They announced in Quraysh, we will give 100 camels to anyone who brings this man back dead or alive. 100 camels. And the same applies to his companion, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. According to some narrations, the 100 camels for either one of them. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us the way he protected Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Quraysh were very intelligent. Now, a point of importance is Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu had one of his servants by the name of Amir ibn Fuhayra. And this man, he was a shepherd, servant, and he used to take the sheep to graze. He was instructed that you must graze your sheep near this cave. And one of the reasons would be that you see the footsteps of these men who walked to the cave will be looked at by Quraysh. Once you have sheep walk all over it, it becomes very difficult for them to notice. Look at the planning. Look at the planning so perfect, subhanallah, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this Amir ibn Fuhayra, he took his sheep and they walked all over these footsteps and so on. But Quraysh, they were too intelligent. They had their intelligence. So they were looking all over until some sort of signs led them to the cave. And this all was a plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us a lesson here today. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he protects you, wallahi, wallahi, nobody can harm you. Not at all. And believe me, people can become blinded that you are standing there. And people can become blinded from your wealth that they are trying to steal, although it will be glaring them in their faces. That is if Allah wills. He has done it and he continues doing it. May Allah protect us. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the cave with Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, the two of them were there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of what happened in that particular cave. Allah Akbar. Allah says, if you are not going to assist Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah has helped him in the past. When there were two of them in the, in the cave and 
The, the, his companion who is Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu was told, do not fear, Allah is with us. Do not fear, Allah is with us. And Allah says, we sent to them armies that were not seen. We sent to them armies that were not seen. Allah protected them. Quraysh, their members had got right to the mouth of the cave. They were quite convinced that this is roughly the track where these people are. Because they looked up and down these roads and pathways going to Medina. There was no one. They looked in other directions as well. No sign. So this was the only thing. And Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu looks at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He says, if these people have to look down, they will see us. If these people have to look properly, they will see us. And this is when Allah says, that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was instructed to tell him, La tahzan, don't be sad. Inna Allah ma'ana, Allah is with us. So the verse says, فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَتَهُ عَلَيْهِ Allah then sent down the tranquility and the peace upon him, upon not only his messenger who was already that, but even Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu was calm and relaxed. Now there is mention made of a spider and a dove. There is mention made in the books of history, not in the books of hadith. I hope you can see the difference between the two. The books of history make mention of a spider that spun its web in a way that the people of Quraysh, it is said they asked a question. How can they be in here if there is a spider web? Because a spider web wouldn't be here already. It would have needed some time. So it shows, you know, when you walk into your home and there's all webs, it means there's been no one there for a while. And the same applies to a nest of a little pigeon or dove. But for your information, as for the pigeon or dove, even the books of history make mention that the narration is not authentic. And as for the spinning of the web, it is made mention in the books of Sira, but not in the books of Hadith. And the Muhaddithin still say that it is highly debatable, although some of the scholars say, no, it is authentic. For me and you, Alhamdulillah, we surrender and we say Allah protected them with armies and Allah's armies include the birds and the spiders and the angels and anyone else whom Allah wants. What happened is they were protected. Subhanallah. So Alhamdulillah. Quraysh then looked this way, that way and turned around. When they turned around and went away and after some time on the third day, what happened? This man comes with the two camels. By the third day, the, the hunt had been already, you know, calmed down and all the hype of it was all gone. And now this man, Abdullah ibn Urayqit, he comes with the uh, two camels and he is ready to pick up Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the meantime, for the amount of days, what was happening is the son of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, who was a young boy, Abdullah ibn Abi Bakr, he was tasked with something by his father. His father told him as he was leaving, listen my son, during the daytime you must walk around by Quraysh, see what they're saying about us and what's happening and bring us some news in the night. And this young boy used to actually do that. So this was just to find out what was happening and to know that these people heading in the wrong direction and in that direction and this and that and so on. So then they had given up at a certain point. And then as we mentioned, the daughter of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu came to help Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his father with some food. And this had happened. She used to come quietly walking out and then she would go and deliver the food, come back and so on. This was the group of people, mainly made up of the family of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. When the day the Prophet sallallahu told him in his home that I have been permitted to leave, the first thing he said, as to ya Rasulullah. Can I be your companion or messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said, yes indeed. And this is when he became the companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we believe not only the companion in his life, but even in the death, he is buried right next to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, the best of those who tread this earth after the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So thereafter, they started their journey and alhamdulillah, the journey was a beautiful journey, which the guide intelligently took them on a different route altogether, not on the normal route. Because he realized these people are going to Medina. Let me take them on a longer route on the coast, the coastal road. 
And this is why today people can actually choose to use the old road which goes via Badr and so on to go back into Makkah al Mukarramah from Medina or vice versa. Although the highway is built more or less straight. But when it comes to the old road, it's not even the, the road which was taken by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa because that one was never developed as such later on. It is further in and it follows the coast. So as they were traveling, some miracles happened which we must make mention. One of the first miracles that had happened, subhanallah, news had got around everywhere. Quraysh had sent their horsemen here and there telling everyone 100 camels. 100 camels is a big deal. It's like me telling you 100 million dollars, basically. A large amount of money. And everyone, subhanallah, was looking out for these people because we are going to get 100 camels. 100 camels we are going to get. And there was a certain place where a man who was a bounty hunter, you know what's a bounty hunter? A person who looks for this type of thing and then he goes and hunts for those people and brings them dead or alive to make the money out of it. His name was Suraka ibn Malik. This Suraka ibn Malik was sitting amongst his friends. And one comes up and says, you know what? On that particular road on the coast, I'm sure I saw some people. And that must be Muhammad and his companions. And you know, so Suraka heard it. Very sharp, intelligent man. He immediately said, no, no, that's somebody else. I know those people. It's somebody else. It's not them and so on. And the topic died. As soon as that happened, he got up, got his horse and he ran. So he was cheating. He actually knew that yes, it might be, but to divert the man who brought the news and to get the money for himself and the camels for himself, what did he say? He said, no, no, it's not them. I know it's not them. And then as soon as that man turned around and everything died down a little bit, this man goes and he, as he is racing with his horse, He's racing with his horse and he sees them and he notices and he notices from amongst them the Prophet sallallahu is not looking back and Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu looks back now and again and as he sees them his horse trips and drops and then he gets it up he gets back up on it and he starts going again and the horse has slowed down and it's like it doesn't want to move and this is an authentic narration subhanallah Suraqa bin Malik he makes mention of it later on as well and what happened is, this man says, after some time when I was about to get to them, I got through some quick sand and my horse started sinking in the sand. And so I got off the horse and I managed to take this horse out with great difficulty. By that time, these people had gone even further. And I got onto it and I started going again. And as I'm going, a huge cloud of dust comes up and some smoke as I couldn't even see what was happening from the skies. And I told myself, no, these people, I'm never going to reach them. This man is protected. This man is protected. Subhanallah. This is a miracle. And what had happened is, Suraka bin Malik then yells. He screams in a way that they can hear. He says, look, I promise not to harm you. And at the same time, I would not like harm from you. I want a guarantee. And you are guaranteed. So they slowed down they managed to get hold of him and he came and they spoke to each other and he gave them the news what was the news you people are being sought after there is a hundred camels behind you i obviously there was now a guarantee i'm not going to touch you but what's going to happen i'm going to go back can you give me a note to guarantee me and my safety because now that i've met you what if some of your people see me whatever it was abu bakr as-siddiq radiallahu anhu was instructed by the messenger to write a little note of guarantee for this particular man and Suraka bin Malik, it's reported that thereafter he went away. This man did not become a Muslim. He saw the miracles, but the day when the Muslims returned to Makkah, victorious, that's the day he accepted Islam, this Suraka bin Malik. And then we found out what happened in his life and the whole story, he says it himself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. So Allah protected Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in that way. The next miracle that had happened. There was a lady in a place known as Qudayd. And her name was Atika bint Khalaf. Also known as Umm Ma'bad. And there are two narrations. One of them says that Abu Ma'bad, who is the man, the husband, was not at home. And the other one says, no, he was at home. And the more correct narration says he was at home. So what happened is, the Prophet ﷺ, they stopped at a specific place here in Qudayb and they asked for some food and some drink and so on. And they were told, look, you know what? We don't have any here. We've only got these sheep that are here. 
that do not have much, they don't have any milk and some of them are pregnant and so on. They don't have milk. Now up to that point, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's a group, meaning the group of people who were with the guide Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were very, very careful answering questions. When someone asks Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, who is the man with you? He would say, he's my guide. My guide meaning spiritual guide. But they would think the guide of the road. Yet he was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because they wanted to know who's this man. And he was obviously in such a way that people would not see him if they did not trust someone. Then they wouldn't unnecessarily turn around and so on. Like we heard what Suraka bin Malik says that this man did not turn. But Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu kept turning every now and again. So at this point when they stopped for a little bit of food and drink. Then the Prophet sallallahu spoke and he says to Abu Ma'bad. One narration says Abu Ma'bad was not there so he spoke to Umm Ma'bad. But we will go with the more authentic narration. He spoke to Abu Ma'bad and he says, what about this sheet that's there? He says, look, it's dry. There's no milk at all. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says, would you mind if I try to milk it? So the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was told, no problem. You can milk it. When it came, he put his hand on the others. He made a dua for barakah and goodness. And suddenly the others became full. He milked it. So much milk came out. They all drank. The family drank. The people drank. Abu Bakr Siddiq drank. They all drank. They were okay. And when they were finished drinking, they, he milked it according to the narration once again for a surplus of milk. Subhanallah. And this Abu Ma'bad looks and says, Are you not the man that Quraysh is looking for? You are not the man who has reneged from the religion of the forefathers. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa within his heart, he knew that this person here is about to enter the fold of Islam. So he said, well, so they say that I was a renegade and I did this and that. And I am the man they're looking for. He says, I bear witness that you are a prophet. You are the messenger. I have seen. That's it. Subhanallah. Amazing. The other narration says that he was away, but this happened to his wife. And when his wife told him what happened, he said, that was the man and I will follow him if I can, inshallah. But the more correct narration says, he immediately said, can I not join you people? You're going to Medina, Hijrah, come, I'm coming. I'll pack up my things and myself and wife will come with you. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told him, no, wait until the day you hear about us. When you hear that we have now come up, then you can come to al Madinah al munawwara And true to his word, he did make it there after some time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness. This was another miracle that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was granted. Also, it is reported in some correct narrations that as Zubair ibn al-Awwam, as he was coming back from his journey and his travel, had met this caravan of, Abu, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We say caravan, we're speaking of two camels, uh, perhaps a third one. And he met them and he gave them some clothing and so on. This was as Zubair ibn al-Awwam, who was a Sahabi, radiallahu an, returning from one of his journeys. Then comes the historic occasion when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on a Monday arrived in Quba, the outskirts of Medina Munawwara, from a distance. Every day the people used to come out and look. Where, is these, where are these people? Perhaps we'll see them. Perhaps we'll see them. On that day, they had waited. It was quite a hot day and they were all gone back. And as the heat became very intense, subhanallah, a Jewish man who had climbed up saw and he says, you know what? There is your man, your man. You know, this, the term used is like grandfather has arrived. You know, your man has arrived here. And so they all got excited. This was Quba. Quba, the outskirts of Medina Munawwara. And mashallah, tabarakallah, they all came up. And they, some of them had got their swords in order to protect Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just in case something went wrong. And they went up and they were so happy. They got to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They got to Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And being so excited, welcoming them, declaring their shahada, declaring the words of, you know, Ya Muhammad, Ya Rasulullah, and so on. These were the people of Quba having come out, the muhajireen from amongst them, the ansar from amongst them, those who were helpers from Medina Munawwara, and they had come out. It is reported this 
the arrival. There are many conflicting narrations as per the date of arrival. But one of the most authentic narrations states that it was a Monday, the 12th of Rabi al Awwal. Have you heard that date before somewhere? Subhanallah. Coinciding similarly to similar date as the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he arrived in Quba. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Just to make quick mention of where he spent his time whilst he was in Quba. In Quba, he stayed between 14 and 19 days. And he stayed at the house of one of the leaders of Banu Amr, whose name was Kulthum ibn al -Hidim. And this man was one of the leaders. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stayed in his home. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam met with his people. And lots of goodness was spoken. Now he was already protected by the people of Medina Munawwara. Obviously, over and above that was the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he did one thing quite quickly. And that was he built a masjid. He built the first masjid with his own hands and the companions helped him. And that is Masjid Quba. If we go to Medina Munawwara, we will see it. And they built a simple structure so that the Muslims could pray and so that they could gather and so that they could meet and so that they could learn more about their faith. And they built a structure which was not a beautiful structure, but the hearts of the people who attended were beautiful. Today it's the opposite. Structure is beautiful. Are the hearts of the people who attend as beautiful? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us guidance until we meet again. صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد سبحان الله بحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك. Experience the beauty of Islam and bring happiness into your life with our app One Islam TV. You will have access to a wide variety of interesting documentaries, inspiring lectures, and so much more. Download One Islam TV from the Apple or Google Play Store today.